you before about the difference between a story or an idea naturally evolving over the course of numerous manuscripts and throughout human history and the idea of it being divinely inspired. And you were seeming to imply that these are almost interchangeable concepts. Now, mm. if that's the case, when you say that this, this divine spirit behind the Bible is actually just the way that it has evolved throughout the human history, throughout the different manuscripts that we've had, then saying that that is what divinity is, I think for you may drag the mundane up into the realm of divinity. Mm -hmm. But I think for people like Richard and for many people listening, what it does instead is drags the divine yes. down to the realm of the mundane. Very well put, yes. When we think about wildly successful businesses, I forgot about and this. Brilliant marketing. <laughs> no, I, I like how there's a moment where Jordan Peterson is loading. The business behind the business well, that makes For millions this of entrepreneurs, this is his loading screen where he tries Shopify. to figure out what the fuck Shopify that means. is home to the number one checkout on the planet. And here's the I mean, I guess it's better than a spinning circle. With shop would drag the the divine down into the realm of the mundane if we're speaking of something like a the straight narrow path of harmony between multiple multiple modes of being i don't think it doesn't make any difference to me whether it's the material reaching upward or the divine descending downward i don't think there's any difference between those two well, things you don't that's exactly right that's the problem well you, i don't, you don't, you don't look, see the difference well look 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 at it this way so for example in in this conversation you you, you know this to be the case like there's various ways that this conversation could go sideways right seriously like we could Either of us could try to win. Either of us could try to demonstrate our intellectual superiority, right? Each of us could misrepresent the other. Or we could both try, and I do think we are in fact trying that, and I think Alex is helping along with that just, just fine. We could try to follow the thread of the exploratory truth and see if we could get somewhere. Now, I don't think there is any difference between that, by the way, and what's expressed in the biblical text as the spirit of the Logos. That's why we have dialogue. I'm very interested in the possibility that truths emerge through evolving manuscripts. Now, that's a very interesting idea, and it's totally different from divine inspiration. And I, I want to pursue it because I don't believe in divine inspiration, but I would be prepared to believe in evolving manuscripts. Well, I, I, would, think... say, well, I would say this is why I had uh, set forward the possibility of taking a look particularly at Mircea Eliade because real quick just based on um, our analysis of Dawkins previously on yeah. the program he kind of trying to talk himself into being like I'm not Christian but I'm kind of yeah. Christian. so he's like you know I don't believe in divine inspiration but in the wisdom of, of passed down manuscripts I feel like he's like kind of saying like give me a normal version of this Pearson actually but... does later on uh invoke the whole like cultural christian thing uh right w w you know so so like uh yeah you're not too far off from, from but, where uh dawkins is at but it's also real and it's also not real and the distinction doesn't matter <laughs> uh, yeah uh, yeah yeah it's, it's the uh that old tweet about how uh good things and bad things are exactly the same you're fucking simpleton right you know that, that that's sort of the uh it's sort of the uh, the epistemic, or I don't know. It's I guess the metaphysical version of that. It's like, yeah, it's real. It's also not real, and also being real and being not real are exactly the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I will. The only thing I would also weigh in on is uh, I feel like uh, this kind of muddling, even to people who um, try to. I would consider myself someone who's open to spiritual beliefs, but ultimately, probably in terms of like philosophically a rationalist right i don't think that spirituality gains anything by saying that hey there's there's there, there's no difference you know what i mean i think yeah, that, right. that i don't really see that as to me that only can that just confuses things more and people who are more cogent about the spiritual realm say that it's you know it's based on faith or about looking into mist like you know mysteries that can't be solved do you know what i mean yeah. versus the, like there are limits to rational thought but i feel like to Alex's point too, Peterson is kind of just intermingling all of it when he when he tries to kind of blur the line about like what's real and what's not real and stuff like that, which I guess is harder if you're trying to actually believe specifically in the Bible versus just like some kind of like, you know, self motivated spiritual thought. But I, he has a his project is 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 a difficult one, Peter, to to kind of bring all this together. But anyway, because that's where you'd find the best work. He's a 
he's brilliant. The history of, I believe that if you study the history of religious ideas, it's a three volume manuscript or the sacred and the profane, which is probably his single best work, that you'd see profound analogies between the manner in which you've been construing the world biologically, including the trains of thought that led you to the development of the idea of the meme. I really believe that. Well, analogies is one thing, but, but is it the same thing? I think it's the same. Th I do. I think, look, I don't know. That's why I'd like your opinion on it. You know, well, seriously, like, it's a complicated question. I've talked to, it's a complicated question. Most people don't know both literatures. There's not a lot of people to discuss this sort of thing with. Camille Pelly, I talked to Camille Pelly. <laughs> Have you read that book, Ben? The Sacred and the Profane by by Eliade? I have not. You know? Okay. <laughs> He's just flying off the handle. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, just, just to psychoanalyze Jordan Peterson here, I believe he really thinks that he was going to be, uh, become best friends with, uh, uh, with Richard Dawkins in this. And Richard Dawkins is just like, no, no, that's foolish to, to like yeah. everything he brings up. And this is like an hour in. So he's like a little frustrated that, that he's not become friends like he imagined that him and uh... Dawkins were going to be. And he's so also, he's, he's, he's kind of just like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, he's, like, he's polite, like he's, what's this Canadian madman saying? I don't understand. And, uh, yeah. and, and like Jordan Peterson's like really angry at this point that Richard Dawkins well, is his friend. I think yeah. it's impressive that, that, that Alex uh, O'Connor is able to keep a straight face. I think, I, I mean, assuming if you don't, like that is maybe one of his strongest skills. Cause I think I even have a similar haircut to him. I think I could grow the mustache. I think I could, you know, maybe lose a little, you know, uh, go on a diet and, and then look exactly like him. But I think that I would be, I would find it very hard not to chuckle. <laughs> but, but could you do it if you put like a tack in your shoe and every single time Jordan <laughs> Peterson said something ridiculous, you just stab your toe into I, the but, I, I actually legitimately find Jordan Peterson to be one of the funniest people. I've oh ever. my God. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no question. I mean, I, I also think that it's like, I don't know. I think that there's a, there's a degree of polite standoffishness that you kind of have to either have been born into, or at least been assimilated into over the course of your life, the, the British upper classes to, to have. And, uh, and so I think that like, Dawkins and, and, and Alex O'Connor kind of have both have versions of that. And, uh, you know, and uh, I don't know, you know, maybe uh, Jordan Peterson, I mean, ultimately is a North American, you know, it's uh, what's the, I remember there's a G.A. Cohen lecture where he has a, uh, he has this joke about, you know, a, a Canadian is just an American who says, sorry. Yeah, uh, and so Andy, so you've seen some of the stuff before this point, right? What, there, uh, not much to be honest. Okay, with you. okay, but yeah, so they, uh, it's about memes, right? Because I mean, I guess like there's a there's like an idea of just like an image macro, yeah. but I know memes are very important to Jordan, right? Because they go into yeah. Well, well, also Dawkins These created the. Yeah, I mean, he invented the term. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm I'm coming in very ignorant. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, um, well, let's so, pretend so, there's yeah. other ignorant people out there like me. You know, uh, so, so, I, so, yeah, I, Jordan I, Peterson I right now is ignorant. like that's why he's like seeming so frustrated because he's just like I like he's a big fanboy and like Richard Dawkins isn't like going like Hey, you're really smart. Let's be friends. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when he says like, oh, that's why I want you, like. You know, I, I think Dawkins, like the at least a couple of minutes we've watched so far, the the energy that Dawkins is bringing to this is, you're saying some very strange things right now. I'm I'm politely skeptical, and um, and and Peterson is just immensely frustrated by that, right? You know, it's, it's this like is, it's like what do you think those are this? I mean, there might be analogies, but I mean, I mean, there's the same thing. I was like, I want, I want you to read and tell me. <laughs> it's, you know, yeah, it's a, the dynamic here is on, but let's keep watching. Tell you about this. She studied the work of a man named Eric Neumann. 
Neumann wrote a book called The History, Origins and History of Consciousness, which is a work of genius, and also another book called The Great Mother, which is a study of the symbolism of the feminine. It's a great book. Pallia told me that she believed that if the Academy would have turned to Eric Neumann, who's a student of Jung, although the greatest student of Jung, and maybe one who surpassed him, that the entire culture war that's torn the universities apart wouldn't have happened. People don't know this literature. And it's, 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 let, let, let me give you an example of this. You tell me what you think about this. Okay, so I, I spent a fair bit of time studying the psychophysiology of the hypothalamus. Okay, so the hypothalamus is set up, it's, it's got two halves, basically. One half deals with fundamental motivated states, hunger, thirst, defensive aggression, sexuality, and so forth. And when those areas are dominated, the, the biologically relevant goal is activated and perceptions are oriented towards that goal. Okay, so now then you might ask yourself, well, what happens if all those biologically motivated states are satiated? Uh -huh. And the answer seems to be is that the other half of the hypothalamus kicks in and it mediates exploratory behavior. And so the default structure of the mammalian nervous system is, if satiated or in doubt, explore and gather new information. There's no difference between that and hero mythology. They are the same thing. They're the same thing. The, the dragon fight, for example, which is the oldest story we have. It's, it's coded in the Mesopotamian mythology. The dragon fight story is explore the dangerous unknown, discover the treasure that revitalizes the community. There's no difference between that and the science that you practice. They're the same thing. What do you think it's of that, the same story. I don't know what to make of that. I mean, um, you say they're the, they're the same story. You, you, you've analogized the, the, the dragon fight to well, fighting Satan. how many dragons have Satan. you overcome in your life? I, I'm not interested in dragons. I'm interested in, re in reality. Okay, so let's, let's, okay. So I, I read a book a while back that described the, described the, uh, the biological reality of the dragon. <laughs> say, well, there's no such thing as a dragon. It's like, okay, is there such a thing as a predator? Of course. Well, that's that's a meta category. What's the category of predator? Bear. I feel bad for eagle. Jordan. If you're a primate, it. fire is fire a predator? No. Well, it's complicated <laughs> because a fire kills you. Okay, so is there a worse <laughs> predator than serpentine, flying, fire-breathing reptile? Is that not the imagistic equivalent of predator? So, is it, so in what way, if predator is real, in what way isn't dragon real? It doesn't take that much imagination to, to see the identity. And then wouldn't the fundamental task of edible primates be to figure out how to overcome the dragon forever? I don't know why you say dragon. I mean, we, we have lions, we have tigers, we have saber tooths, we have why not tyrannosaurs abstract? out there. Right, but why not abstract? Because it's for the same reason that we have the term predator. Like we have the term bear, lion, Komodo dragon. Well, you make an amalgamation, you say, well, the, the relevant set of features is. I mean, uh, wouldn't the amalgamation just be the predator from the predator movie? Uh, I, I, yeah, yeah, I, I guess, I guess. I feel kind of bad for Jordan Peterson based on Andy's uh, narrative of what's happening because he's really trying and he really isn't getting the validation that he seeks. But um, he's just making what seems like a really simple concept so complex and abstract. But like basically there's a difference between like the concept of a predator, right? And maybe like, I guess like you, you could argue maybe that like the dragon is a platonic ideal of a predator, right? But then there are uh instantiations of predators right um substance like that meat but, but is fire a predator <laughs> <laughs> no. that's actually the best part of it you know it's like well it's fire predator and dog's just like no <laughs> <laughs> well it's complicated because fire can kill you it's like well okay i mean there's a all so, can wa so, can, so can water <laughs> yeah so can, it's so can heights water a predator i mean that's the like you could drown in it it's, it's, i don't i don't understand is, i mean are, is disease a predator actually a disease is definitely closer to a predator than fire <laughs> yeah so that was just a very strange like uh i really like how, how peterson just didn't let that break his stride like 
right? <laughs> you know, he did the two seconds. Well, it's complicated. Then he like went back to what he was saying. It's like, is it complicated? It, it just doesn't seem like the right category there. But like, whatever. It's clearly not uh, the biggest. It's like, so this, it's going so wrong is, here. Like, like yeah, it's like, okay, yeah. does predator exist? Like, sure, predators exist. This particular predator does not exist. I don't know, it's 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 like if I don't. It's like a, is uh, you know, it's like does Harry Potter exist? No. Do, well, do do private school kids exist? Sure, yes. Uh, like <laughs> you know, people who go to boarding schools, you know, uh, do like you know, stage magicians exist? You know, it's like well, therefore you put together these two concepts and you get Harry Potter. Like I, I don't. D does Millie Vanilli exist? I I just. It's just so, it, like, yes. I mean, there there are lots of things where the general category exists, but but like a particular example of it does, does not exist, right? I mean, it's, it's the yeah, uh, yeah. You know, samurais exist, space exists, therefore Darth Vader exists. Right? Does Darth Vader not? Ex yeah, I mean, he's the ultimate villain, right? What are we most yeah. afraid of? Outer space, right? I mean, we're, we're afraid of the infinite expanse of space, right? And then, uh, yeah. um, what? And then who? And then who is our biggest antagonist in life? Is our father, obviously. Yes. Right? I mean, read Freud, read read, sure. you know, read. So, okay, antagonistic space father, who also, and then also lightsabers would also be. I, for, now, I forgot to mention that would probably yeah. be the other biggest fear. Yeah, it's like fire. <laughs> do, do swords exist? Does fire exist? Well, you know, there you go, lightsaber. It's fire it's, swords. It's, yeah, it's it's just so yeah, it's very confusing, right? It's like the uh, what's the Latveria, right? That's where Doctor Doom comes from, right? Yes. You know, yes. like it's it's like okay, well, you don't think Latveria exists? I mean, does does Eastern Europe exist? Okay, well, well there you go, right? It's like it's like yes, Eastern Europe exists. This particular Eastern European country does not exist. Uh, this, and, and like you know, you can have a a category can exist without every instance of that category that anybody has ever talked about, uh, it, you know, existing. Uh, that's it. Like, does 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 uh, does Bigfoot exist? No. Oh, really? So bipedal mammals don't exist. So Isn't no, it? That's crazy. It yeah. Big, but... Bigfoot and and like if if you just say it's like well this would be the ultimate representation of the category, which is what he really seems to be. Saying. Yeah. Yeah. He's not differentiating between concepts and things that exist in the physical world outside of your brain. Obviously dragons exist as a concept, right? They're on television shows. They're in our brains. We know what a dragon is, but there's a different type of existence, right? Is what is that he just, he refuses to acknowledge the difference between those types of existence, right? Which well, I guess yeah. Is so this is why I kept thinking about it. There's this there's this famous paper. Uh, I would actually I was arguing on on Twitter today. Uh, another fascinating life decision uh, with some <laughs> Jordan Peterson super fan who was trying to defend this claim, and um, you know he uh, he said this guy said. Uh, Peterson is saying, take an abstraction, one of the most fear-inspiring creatures and objects, the feature, the creature we create, a dragon, becomes an ontological object, and that phrase becomes an ontological, like, what is an ontological object, right? Ontology is just the, is just the branch of metaphysics where you're asking questions about which objects exist. I don't know what it means to say that an object is ontological, but, like, what the whole thing made me think of is there's this classic paper about ontology by Willard Van Orman Quine, uh, who's who's like the, uh, the the you know maybe one of the most important philosophers who non philosophers don't know about of the twentieth century, uh, called on what there is, which is uh, where he's talking about people who argue that non existent objects have some sort of reality, et cetera. And there's this passage in there that it made me think about, cause it's like, well, this to the extent that I could follow Peterson's thought here at all, right? Like this, this seems to, it, it seems like you say, it's like, okay, so this is this like ultimate, like if this existed, it would be the ultimate predator, but it doesn't. So what, what do we, say right like it's like well we you know abstract from the predator and we 
take the things that we abstract and we form it into this mental construction. It's like, okay. But like, at this point, you're talking about something existing, as Jake just said, as like a mental construct, as an idea in your head, right? But that's not the same thing. Like, that's not what anybody's denying when they say that dragons don't exist, right? They're, they're not denying that thoughts about dragons exist. It's, you know, certainly everybody acknowledges that. They're denying that dragons exist, right? So so Quine says in this passage uh, that, uh, you know, McX cannot indeed quite persuade himself uh, that any region of space-time near or remote contains a flying horse of flesh and blood, Pressed for further details on Pegasus, then he says that Pegasus is an idea in men's minds. Here, however, confusion begins to be apparent. Um, that, uh, that So skipping ahead a little bit, this mental entity is not what people are talking about when they deny Pegasus. Mick X never confuses the Parthenon with the Parthenon idea. The Parthenon is physical. The Parthenon idea is mental. The Parthenon is visible. The Parthenon idea is invisible. We cannot, we cannot easily imagine two things more unlike and less liable to confusion than the Parthenon and the idea of the Parthenon. But we would shift from the Parthenon to Pegasus, the confusion sets in, uh, for no other reason than McX would sooner be deceived by the crudest, most flagrant counterfeit than grant the non-being of Pegasus. It's like, yeah, that seems to apply fairly perfectly to what Peterson is saying here. It's like, to the extent that I can follow what you're saying here at all, you're just saying that's like our sort of mental construction of a dragon, right? From, from the, you know, that like, sure, we're abstracting the features of predators and sort of constructed and, and, you know, that like mentally this idea of the ultimate predator, it's like, okay, fine. Right. But like, ultimately if what you're saying is that, our idea of a, of a dragon exists like yeah no shit i mean no, nobody denies that right like it's that's not controversial right like what people are denying like what richard dawkins is denying when he says there aren't any such thing as dragons is 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 dragons right i mean the idea of a dragon is no more a dragon than the then again you know the idea but, of the the parthenon is the parthenon yeah, right? yeah. It's, it's, it's like our thoughts about the Parthenon are no more the actual physical building, right? Than uh, than our thoughts about dragons are dragons, right? It's like yes, dragons aren't real. People thinking thoughts about dragons is real. Uh, then I, I don't think you know. Like I think once you've made that distinction, I, I really don't understand what Peterson is trying to say. But there's the biological reality of dragons. <laughs> What I what I what I love about Dawkins is that he's even giving Peterson less than I would in this moment because I would just to move the conversation along. I'd be like, okay, yes, dragons in the way you mean you're talking exist, but he's literally like, I don't care about a fanciful creature. I care about a real creature, like a lion or a tiger. I don't care about a dragon. Why do you care about a dragon, yo? So <laughs> it's like he won't even like. No, no, he's, no, he's, no. he's like he's like philosophically opposed to even talking about like fantasy shit which i would at least like try to understand what he's talking about it's like i don't no. care about ch silly children's games <laughs> no it's 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 very fun because it's like you know there there are different ways you can handle peterson when he starts doing this so like a couple of years ago um we we watched on the show a uh might even be pre-Jake, I don't remember. I, no, I, th I think this was in the Jake era. But anyway, we watched a couple of years ago um, the uh, that clip of Dave Rubin asking Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro why they believed in God. And Peterson's answer was like, it sounded like about half an hour earlier, he got, he'd like come down from Mescaline and he was he was trying to express the insights that he had felt there, uh, you know that he he detects a masculine principle in the order of things and blah 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 blah, and and Ben Shapiro's response to that was to do more or less what I do if I'm in like a if I'm teaching like a an intro class, 
and somebody just babbles something completely incoherent in class discussion, which is say, okay, so I think what you're trying to say is, and then you come up with something that's like sort of in the neighborhood of what they were saying, but that actually makes sense. And the reason you do that is that if you just stop and interrogate the thing they just said, like, you know, more than a little bit, then like class, like the discussion has just come to a screeching halt. Now you're just talking about this, right? So it's like, if you're just like, wait, wait, I have no idea what you, what you just said. Can you explain that to me, right? Then it's like 10 not very productive minutes of going back and forth about that. So like, you know, just pedagogically, what you have to do is just kind of pretend that they said something that made more sense than it did. And, you know, usually if somebody is babbling at that level, they're so confused that like, they'll just accept whatever translation you give them, right? It's like, oh, I think what John's trying to say is that you come up with something. They're like, yeah, that's it, right? <laughs> like, Because uh, it's like close enough and like, the difference isn't clear in their heads or whatever. So it's like, that's one way of doing it. And that's the appropriate way the classroom discussion but in this context where that's not really a concern it is a much much funnier to do what dawkins is doing here be like no that doesn't make sense what you, what are you talking about I, I have this vision of what i'm looking at and i know it's kind of out of left field but i'm imagining that like alex o'connor is like a university student who was like on his laptop at a coffee shop doing work and this like crazy professor who used to work at the university, but now is on sabbatical because he's like having a mental breakdown, shows up every day and talks his ear off, right? And he wants to, he he's convinced that he's like written a paper, uh, this is Jordan Peterson, that is gonna like shake up the entire world of multiple fields, right? And Alex's father happens to be like, you know, also work at the university, be a different professor at the university. And he's like, I'm tell like, I'm telling you, take me home to your father. Let's have dinner and I'm going to like pitch him on my <laughs> ideas. And Alex is just like too polite to kind of be like, oh, I don't know, man. You know, so he's like, all right, dad, this kind of crazy guy is uh, he's like, I really regret being nice to him at this point, you know, uh, but uh, I don't know. I just cinematically, this is what I see b before me where Alex is like cringing inside that he's introduced his father to this to this man who has like delusions of grandeur. <laughs> You have been watching free public content from Give Them an Argument. To access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights, all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns, all of the patron-exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron-exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more, go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with, don't be foolish. <laughs>